Tayo Matsumoto has become one of my favorite Japanese cartoonists lately. Along with Kyu Hayashida, the creator of Doro Doro, and Atsushi Kaneko, the creator of Search and Destroy. I deliberately avoid the term mangaka here because all three of them don't deliver your usual straightforward manga, whatever I mean by that, but blend Japanese styles with other often European sensibilities. Especially Tayo Matsumoto is very open about his European influences. In the end of the 80s he went to France to report about the rally Paris Dakar for a manga magazine and discovered in particular Miguel Ancho Prado, Enki Bilal and Möbius. All three of them, and a lot more I would like to add, having their influence on his work until the recent day. Maybe this shows even in the relative brevity of his comics. Unlike the usual mangaka, he concludes his stories in one or at least in not more than a half a dozen trades. Cats in the Louvre, for example, is collected in one hardcover by Viz Media and may be my recommendation to check out Matsumoto. Because if you don't fall in love with this charming story about a group of mysterious cats, or cat beings, I should say, living inside the Louvre, I don't know. Given that you love cats and paintings like me, but maybe even if you don't. Cats in the Louvre is one of Matsumoto's most accessible works for sure, despite of the mystery around the cats. It's a nice fairy tale-ish story, maybe you'll find it even a bit kitschy, but for me it's the right kind of kitsch. The nice heartwarming, but not too sweet one, if you know what I mean. Cats in the Louvre was created in cooperation with the museum, so the reader is introduced with the Louvre and some of the highlights in its collection, but it's just the background for the story. One is never force-fed information, there's no educational pointer finger or such. But if I would be hard-pressed to name my favorite Matsumoto comic so far, I would pick either Gogo Monster or Sunny. Sunny in particular is interesting because of the autobiographical aspect. Again, a very European trope, I think. This is the German edition collected in six trade paperbacks, so it's his most extensive work to date. But it's basically a series of short stories, so each of these collected editions could be read on its own. Sunny is set in children's home. We follow the staff of social workers in that home and the wild bunch of kids they have to care for. Even though no of the characters is called Tayo, it's very clear that this story uses and processes a lot of his own experiences when he was brought up in a similar children's home. Ah, scratch what I said about Cats in the Louvre, you should read at least one of these sunny books first. One of the most tender, emotionally disturbing, funny, beautiful, st beautiful stories you will ever read. None of these characters, neither the staff nor the kids, feels fictional. They are real to a degree that it almost rips your heart out when, for instance, one of the children is disappointed again by his or her parents or other adults who just abandoned them there. The kids desperately long for going back to their parents who, for different reasons, are not able to take the responsibility. So they have to settle in this home. The kids have to settle in this home, exiled from their families, unloved, thrown away. The comic doesn't sugarcoat anything. In one scene it's described how one of the kids destroyed everything in his reach in furious anger. When he realized that he was abandoned by his mother, he was way beyond sad. He could not cry anymore, but puked out of desperation and anger. By the way, the title giving Sunny is an old defunct Nissan Sunny, which stands aside the children's home. And this car serves as a playground and a hideaway for the children. None of the adults is allowed there. For me, Sunny is the key to understand Matsumoto's comics and his motivation to tell us these stories about kids without families. 
strangely disconnected from society, having to fend for themselves, like in Tech on King Creed. Maybe Matsumoto's most famous comic. Here's my German edition. I talked about it in Penelogy 409. Two brothers have to survive as some outlaws in a chaotic sci-fi world. It's good. Check it out. For more information, watch Penelogy 409. But I would rather recommend to read Gogo Monster first because it's maybe Matsumoto's most successful attempt to blend a story about growing up with surreal motives. In the center is a boy with an extreme imagination who has to learn to live with his inner world as he has to cope with quotes on quotes of reality. It's a fantastic story, realistic yet ambiguous, open for interpretation yet clear in structure, just a piece of wonderful graphic literature. This is the beautiful German edition by Reprodukt with a slipcase, colored paper block, ribbon and everything. It seems that the similar English edition is out of stock right now, but it's really, really worth to be hunted down. And as you can see, Matsumoto's art style is highly intricate, diversified, not to say eclectic, experimental like always. Despite of having a certain amount of narration tools that are clearly his own, he changes his style ever so slightly with each new story, obviously adapting to the needs of each story. Like his style is a bit cleared up in Ping Pong, a sports manga, about, obviously, table tennis. Matsumoto did mangas about baseball and boxing before, but Ping Pong was a side of Tech on Kinkrete, one of his biggest successes. I would not say it's his best comic, but that depends on your perspective, what you expect from a story. Ping Pong is an almost mainstream, straightforward narrative with, again, two boys in the center, two very different characters. One a very ambitious kid, the other with seemingly more talent for table tennis, but without any ambition to win. So you could say the premise is pretty conventional. And even how the narrative progresses from tournament to tournament. But the characterization of the main personnel is outstanding, including the trainers who serve as some kind of substitute families for the boys. So I guess you can see that I didn't exaggerate when I said that Sunny was the key to Matsumoto's comics. And Matsumoto's panel layouts always shine when they convey the atmosphere and the chaos of complex events in which many things happen at the same time, be it the teeming mass of lively kids in an orphanage or be it a table tennis championship in a sports hall. From 2000 up to 2005, Matsumoto created number five, a series of four trades that have just been published in English translations recently. I finished it yesterday, but I find it hard to come to some kind of judgment with just one read through. It's a pretty complex sci-fi story with fantastic and fairy tale and even some satiric elements. Art wise, heavily influenced by Möbius, with some hints of Feral Dalrymple, I might add, especially in regards of the character-based way of narrating the story, even though I have to say that Feral Dalrymple wasn't uh, that well-known in 2005, maybe not even around in 2005. Anyhow, in the center is again some kind of dysfunctional family. This time it's a bunch of genetically engineered beings and their creator, an old scientist in a bunny costume, who they like to call Peppy. It's a very interesting post-apocalyptic slash retro-futuristic slash whatever world. Matsumoto's drawings switch once more seamlessly between loose and sketchy on the one hand and perfect, tight and detailed on the other. But I don't want to lie, for me number five was a bit hard to get into, and for long parts I was quite confused. Haven't felt the motivation or the necessity of some characters, but I rolled with it. And in the end I was satisfied and, which is even more important, felt that it will be extremely rewarding to read the whole series once again. 
Anyhow, this was my most recent trip into Manga Land. But since I've discovered a lot of very interesting cartoonists there, it won't be my last for sure. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.